Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Dresden Bloom. Now the Dresden pattern, it's a traditional quilt pattern, this style right here. But this pattern has got half Dresdens and a whole one in the middle, so I think this one will be a lot of fun to make. Now this pattern takes jelly roll strips. So I had a few different jelly rolls here that I thought would look good. This French general one would make a nice traditional quilt. This one here, old fashioned looking fabrics. But this is called Fiorella and it's got metallic accent prints. You can see the bolts behind us here on the shelf. These are all Fiorella. And I think that will make a beautiful quilt. The pattern, it takes 50 jelly roll strips. It's gonna make a 54 inch square quilt. And then we're gonna need a yard and a half of background. So I'm gonna go with this nice cream color for the background. Now for this pattern, we also need a special template. You need a Dresden template. So this has the exact angle we need so that we can make these beautiful pointed flower shaped pieces. Now the first step is to open up the strips here and pick out the ones that we want to use in the Dresden or the patchwork part of the pattern. So I need to pick out strips to go in here. And this roll has a variety of colors, but I think that the patchwork will look really good if I use these darker blues and darker browns. And then the lighter portion, I will save that because we are going to do a patchwork border here and around the outside edges. So I've got the strips picked out for the Dresdens and I took a couple of them. I took four and I've ironed them nice and flat and I've got them laid here on my cutting board. And now I'm ready to do the sub cutting. Now I can cut four layers at a time. You may want to do a few more or a few less. And the sizes that you need are included in the pattern. Now it's not my pattern. It's a Cozy Quilt Club pattern. So they have all of the sizes you need and their patterns are so easy to follow so you won't have any trouble doing your cutting. Once you've got all the pieces cut out, we're just gonna take two at a time over to the sewing machine. So I've got two different colors because that will make my quilt look nice and scrappy. Put them right sides together and stitch down this long edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then let's just finger press that seam to the right here. Now we want to take this right over to the ironing board. Even though we finger pressed it, we do want to iron it. So I like to use a dry iron, then a little steam. Now we're ready to take our Dresden template and center it up on the patchwork here. Then we're gonna to wanna to cut both sides. Now getting this perfectly centered is not really possible because there's no line down the middle. So let me show you what I did so that I can get it perfect every time. I've got some painter's tape here. It's like masking tape, but it comes off of the plastic real easy. So I'm gonna put my template on my cutting board here. Now the bottom of this, it's an inch wide. So if I put it right here on these inch marks, and then I put the top of it perfectly lined up on that straight line there, I know that this is going right down the middle. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of tape here. Now I'm gonna take this straight edge and put it right on that line. And then you can just tear away the excess. It doesn't even have to go all the way down the line. We just need enough of this line showing so we have something to line up with. That looks good. Now we can put this blue tape line right on that seam and we will know that it's in the middle every time before we make a cut. Now we'll turn this whole thing around. 
line it up again, cut off the other side. Now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine. Now we're gonna take this fan-shaped piece and we're going to put it back right sides together. And then the thicker edge here, the fatter edge, we're going to sew it down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then we're going to trim off a little in the corner here. You're not even trimming your stitching, you're just trimming a diagonal cut right there. So here's the piece we just stitched. Now if I lay it flat here, the way we ironed it earlier, my seam allowance is going that direction. So we're going to take this part here, we're making a little point. We want this short seam allowance to go in the opposite direction. So my seams are lining up, but my seam allowances are going in different directions. And I'm going to iron this just a little bit here. Now I want to flip this part to the back side. So I'm just going to put my thumb in there and my finger here, and I'm just going to poke it around so that now it's on the back side. The seam allowances, see, are going in opposite directions. So this is going to lay nice and flat. Now if your point doesn't look real pointy there, you can take a tool like this. There's a lot of different pokey tools, and you can just make it a little more pointy if you like, but it doesn't have to be real sharp. And then give it one more press so that these sides are pressed down. And I like to flip it over, flatten it out. So this is what we need to make the Dresdens. We just need a lot of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some more pairs and make some more of these. So I've got quite a few of them made and you can see that I made multiples like this. And you can mix them all up if you like, or you can make a lot of the same. Now, as I was going, I found a little different method for putting these together that is not exactly the same as what the pattern says, but I found it to be a little bit easier, so let me show you how I do that. So we're still going to start with a pair of strips. But I'm going to sew the short side and pivot and go down the long side. So leave your needle down, pivot, go all the way down the side. Now take this to your cutting board. Now we can put this right down. Now we can take our template. The template is the same length as our strips here. So we're gonna be lining up the top with the cut edge and the bottom with the cut edge. But we're going to slide the tape over so that it is on the stitching line. So the top and bottom meeting, tape on the stitching line, and then we only have to make one cut. And now I'm just going to use my blade to cut off this extra in the corner here. And I can go a little bit closer because I'm not cutting off any of the stitching. Now I'm going to finger press this seam and I've pressed it to the right and then I'm going to take the iron and go up there as far as I can. Then fold this down and put the seam allowance the opposite way which is to the left. Iron it a little. Now we can flip it Poke it out if you need to, so it's nice and pointy there. Press it, flip it, and that was a little bit faster. I've got all those stitched together and I'm ready to start laying out the Dresdens. So I dealt everything out into piles, so I've got the colors evenly distributed. So I've got a small one, four small ones here and one big pile for the center. So I'm just going to start laying these out in a big circle. And once I get it all laid out, I'll probably switch some of the colors around so that it looks nice and balanced. There, now it's pretty well balanced color-wise. And I'm gonna sew these together in pairs. So we can take these two 
and I'm just going to put them right sides together and you can put a little pin here so you remember or you can just hold it and I'm going to stitch down this side here. So just line up these folded edges and I would recommend back tacking right there. And then go all the way down. You don't have to back tack at this end because that's going to be covered up, but we don't want this coming apart at all. And I'm going to trim the threads real close. And then let's press that seam to one side. So we're just going to press it this way and I'm going to finger press it right now. Now let's put this back right where it came from. Now I'm just going to grab the next two and make another pair, put it right back down, press it in the same direction as that one, and I'm going to do that all the way around so everything is stitched together in pairs. That's the last pair there. Now I'm going to take two of these pairs back to the sewing machine. Now we're just going to sew this seam here like we did with the earlier seams. And I'm going to keep pairing things up and stitching these seams until the whole Dresden is in one big circle. I've got the whole Dresden done. It looks nice even from the backside, so all the seam allowances are going in the same direction. So if you want, you can iron a little from the back, make sure they are laying down all the way around. You can just keep going around the circle here. And once it's pretty flat, flip it over. And again, I'm gonna go around the circle a little bit. And once I get it pretty darn flat, then I'm gonna use the steam. Whoops. Now I'm just gonna make half circles. This is a hole, but now I need to make four of these half circles with my other stacks of wedges there. Here's all of the half circle Dresdens. So these are going to go in the corners. And now we need to put all of these onto some backgrounds. And I've gone ahead and cut the background. So the center is going on a square background. So we're gonna to wanna to center this in the middle of here. So the easiest way to do that is to fold your background into quarters. And then just take your fingernail here and just kind of press it just a little bit so we know right where the center is. And that, that's going to get covered up later, so it doesn't matter if you want to use your iron and give a real hard press, you can. Now we want to put this Dresden right in the center, and it makes it real easy to get it centered there. And I'm just going to pin all around the edges. Now to attach the Dresden to your background, you have several options. You can hand applique this. You can use a zigzag or a decorative stitch around the edge. Or you can do like I'm gonna do. I am just going to top stitch right close to the edge after I get it all pinned on here. So I'm just going to stitch very close to the edge and pivot at all of these corners here. Now the pattern recommends that you can use glue basting if you want to glue this down, but that might be something you want to do if you were hand appliquing. With this method, it's really not necessary at all. This is very, very easy to go around. I've got the outside edge all stitched all the way around, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and stay stitch the middle here. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but it won't take very long. And that way, if this part has a tendency to move when I'm putting the center on, this will keep it all in place. So I'm just gonna go very close to the edge and just stitch it down so nothing moves when we're putting that center piece on. I've got all the Dresdens stitched onto the backgrounds. Now on these triangular pieces here. I just centered it up again by folding this first. 
stitched around the edges and then I went ahead and stay stitched right along the edge and around the circle. Now we're ready to get the very center done here. So I am going to fuse on the center. So I'm going to use a product called Heat and Bond. This is a fusible product that will allow me to get my center stuck on there. Now I've drawn on this. There's a paper side and there's a glue side. So it's real easy to draw on the paper side. And this is a three and a half inch circle. Now the pattern does not say exactly what size to make this. And, but I found that three and a half works best for me because I'm not gonna be turning under the edges. I'm gonna just cut right along that line. So let's fuse these to our center fabric. Now you always want to iron your fabric before you put the fusible on it to make sure that it's unwrinkled and nice and flat. And then we are going to fuse this to the back side. So again, the glue side, you can feel these bumpy dots. That's going down on here. And this heat and bond light, you don't need steam. You just need to press it on for about two seconds. Now we can cut along that drawn line. Just get some sharp scissors and go all the way around. So I've got all of these cut out. Now we just need to get this paper off the back side. Sometimes it's a little challenging to get it started. There we go. And you see how it's kind of shiny back there? That's the adhesive. So this is going to go in the middle here, but before I iron it on, I wanna make sure this is ironed up because we did stitch around there and it can wobble a little. So let's just steam it nice and flat. Now we're gonna put this in the middle and you have to kind of peek under the edges to see if you've got it centered. That looks good. So now I'm not gonna use steam. I'm just gonna put this on and it takes six seconds with this product to get it completely stuck on there. There we go. Now the side pieces are a little bit different. So you're going to, again, want to iron it nice and flat before you start. Now we're going to take another center here. There we go. Now I'm going to put this in position here. That looks good, but I'm not going to iron the whole thing because it will stick to my ironing board. So I'm just going to fuse it a little bit. So I'm just, I'm not on the edge here. I'm not ironing the whole thing on. I'm just getting it stuck in place. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to trim this off. You can use your blade or you can use your scissors. But we want all of that fusible out of the way. Now flip it back over and finish pressing it for a whole six seconds. Now we're gonna take these back over to the sewing machine. Now, even though this is fused on, we're still gonna to wanna to sew it. And you have options again. I'm just going to do raw edge applique, meaning I'm going to straight stitch very close to the edge. It's all curved, it's not going to fray out, but that's gonna hold it in place. Now, if you want, you can use a zigzag stitch, you can use a decorative stitch, but you do need to stitch this down. So I'm just gonna go very close to the edge, right around the curve. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all the rest of the half Dresdens and the whole Dresden. So this is how the quilt is going to get laid out. What we need to do next is work on the pieced border that goes around the center. Now these are the strips that I set aside earlier, the extra strips. And I've separated them into two piles. I've got some darker ones and some lighter ones. And these are going to be for the border. So I'm going to use these lighter ones around here. Then I'm going to use the darker ones on that outside border. You don't have to separate them into colors like this. I just thought my quilt might look a little bit better. Thank you. 
Now we're gonna take all these cut pieces and we're gonna stitch them together into one really long piece. But instead of using perpendicular seams, we're going to want to sew these together on the diagonal. So if you've never put these together like that, here's how you do it. Put these right sides together like this with both those edges matching. Now we are going to want to stitch from this corner down to that corner. You could make a line, but the easiest way to do this is to put a line on your sewing machine. And I'm gonna do it again with my tape. So I'm just gonna put the tape on and it's going straight from where the needle will hit, straight down here, oops, just like this. Now I happen to have a mark on my machine right here, so I know that that's straight and I'm not putting it at a big angle, but you can use your ruler or something to get it pretty straight here. Now, all we have to do is line everything up carefully and start right here. So we're gonna slide that over and put our presser foot down. Then if we just fold this back, we want that tip there to stay on this line. So we're gonna slide it over a little as we sew. So you can keep this folded while you start. And all you have to do is watch here and watch that go right up that line. And as you get closer, you can just roll this down till it's all the way down. You can finish up those last few stitches even though you can't see. Now, when we open this up, we've got everything lined up. And we've got a nice diagonal seam. So I'm just going to keep taking pieces random pieces, any old order here. And instead of sewing straight, again, put it right sides together like this, slide it over, put your presser foot down, flip this back so you can see that bottom layer, stitch it all the way down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and make one really, really long border with all of these pieces. Now this is pretty easy to iron. I'm just gonna smooth it out all the way down. And once I get a section ironed, then I'm just going to flip it over and just take my scissors and each one of these intersections has got this extra bit here. So I'm just trimming it off, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance left. Now we're going to take this center, we're going to stitch the border on. We're just going to stitch on one side, and I've got my scissors here with me, and then I'm just going to trim it off. So here's an end. So I'm going to start here, go all the way down the side, and then just whack it off. So I like to stitch, I'm past it, I'm just going to stitch off the end there. And then to make sure that this is nice and straight, I'm going to fold it back on itself so that this fold is even with that cut edge. And this is all lined up here, the border's all folded. I know it's folded straight because I, I don't have it crooked like that, I have it right on top of itself. Then you can just take your scissors and put that blade up against there and cut. Now you know you have a nice perpendicular cut. So this will get finger pressed and I think we better do it toward the border because my background is so light. And then we're going to add to this side. Now, where we just cut is kind of a small piece. That's okay, you can just start sewing. If you feel like that piece is too little, you could always slide this up and start sewing there. I actually kind of like that little piece, so I'm just going to start here and just keep going. Cut it when I get to the bottom and go around all four sides, and then I'm going to go around again. We're gonna get a double-pieced border. 
there. That's going to fit right in the middle there. And I had plenty of border left over, so if you feel like you want to move something down or up, there's plenty to work with here. Now, we're going to pin on these corners here. You can see, if I center it up, there's about a half inch on each side here. So I'm going to center it up and then put these right sides together. Double check that I've got the same amount sticking off of each end and then I'm going to just pin it along here. So I'm going to pin on this side and then I'm going to sew this side on and I'm going to sew the far triangle on. We'll open those up and put these two guys on. All right, we're going to finger press this seam toward the border. And this is all done. I'll show you what it looks like on the table here. Ooh. So now I'll iron it up a bit. And then we're going to add that pieced dark border all the way around just once. Then we'll put a print border all the way around. Then we can get this onto the quilting machine. I've got all the borders on and it's loaded up on the machine. And I've got a bunch of thread colors here, all of which would work. So let's try this green one here first. It's a little bit dark for me there, although it blends in well there. I've got a lighter green here. Now that doesn't show much, but it might show a little bit too much on some of these dark areas. The brown, if you wanted your thread to, if you want all your quilting to show, that would be a good choice because it would be very prominent on the quilt. Nice deep gold. I really think that this light gold is gonna look the best. So it doesn't show much there. It's not gonna show on the light. It's not even gonna show much on the dark. So I'm gonna go with this gold. For the quilting pattern, I'm gonna use the simple rosebuds here. It doesn't look very flowery, but it's got some loops and some little leaves and it's a nice overall pattern. I'm so pleased with how this quilt came out. The more I worked on it, the more I liked working on it. I thought it would be a lot more difficult. These just looked like they would be hard to make, but they really sewed together quite quickly. And there's not so many of them that you get tired of making them. Now I like the pieced border here. It really enhances that patchwork. Pieced border again here with different colors. And then the, the printed border just frames it very nicely. Now on the back side, I used this metallic fusions fabric from Robert Kaufman. We have this in a lot of colors. I've been using it for at least a decade and it's really nice with the metallic. I used that same fabric on the binding, simple quilting, very, very satisfying to make. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the Dresden Bloom. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you have any questions on how to make the quilt, leave it in the comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. One more thing, we're doing a giveaway. We are going to give away the Jewel Box Quilt. This has been one of our most popular patterns. It's made with charm squares. We have a video to show you how to make it. It's all done in bright batiks from Robert Kaufman called Totally Tropical. But today, you could win this quilt. So it's very, very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click the link right below the video that says giveaway. 
And then you, all you have to do is put in your name and your email address. And if you win, we can send this anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.